Hey everybody, quick video that I wanted to make uh, in response to some of the comments and things that I've seen in the last video where I was talking about the new Apache flight model and some of my complaints with the uh, ground friction and what I am assessing really is the tailward of thrust. Uh, but I've seen some comments that uh, maybe take things a little bit too far or maybe you're misunderstanding some of the things I'm talking about. This is not a bad flight model by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, the Apache's ability right now to fly and actually use the force trim the way that's supposed to is better than it has been since launch. Uh, it really is stable. Like I said in that last video, I'm having a lot less of what I call whoa boys where the thing is just like, whoa, where are we going? Um, it's, it's much more stable. This is a good thing, okay? Now, we can have a debate, and I have had the debate with uh, the resident Apache SMEs about the tail rotor, you know, and they'll tell me, well, you know, it does... Con still create thrust and in these certain situations I got it you know we can agree to disagree or maybe uh, have an understanding of of you know comfort in a video game versus what's in real life that's neither here nor there the, of course the tail rotor is creating thrust all the time and then depending on how much power we're putting in and how much pedal we're applying of, of course we're changing that thrust vector uh, or that thrust uh, 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 factor that's not my debate and, and it's not a problem because again the aircraft itself is flying quite well so if we sort of ignore the issues of the tail rotor I'm just kind of popping it up in the air so I can just fly around a little bit while I talk uh, I, I, I like this this is more stable okay I've already hit the trimmer multiple times and nothing's going crazy and I'm able to just make adjustments on the fly that I wasn't necessarily able to before now, you know, the problem is, and, and you know, talking to the SMEs at uh, Eagle Dynamics about this, you know, it's always the same story. We can't, we can't factor in everyone's hardware situation. That's going to be different, and that is going to, that's going to change the paradigm, okay? Some of you have a different control touch. Some of you have different hardware. There's so many variables that if you took a real aircraft, there's only one variable, okay? It's, it's you. Right, the aircraft are all basically the same. Yeah, okay. There's gonna be some, you know, differences between this tail number and this tail number. Some of them like to, like to fly more than others and things like that. But, you know, generally speaking, of course, they're all gonna have the same control setup. They're all gonna have the same rigging. Uh, the only difference is gonna be the pilot behind the controls. But we've got people playing with twist sticks. You got people playing with no pedals, uh, crazy pedals, pedals with dampers and pedals with heavy springs. You got guys with long sticks and short sticks and. We won't even make any girth jokes, but the point is there's a lot of things that can change and it's very hard to dial in what is proper. So I've seen some people comment and say, oh, I'm not going to fly the Apache until they fix the flight model. Well, I don't know that I would do that. I don't understand that mentality. All right. I've already sort of showed you, which again was really kind of the point of the last video. I've showed you that you can take off without looking like a whirling dervish. You got to put a little bit more effort into it than you used to. But this is just one step along the road to what I guess we can call perfection. I don't know that we'll ever have perfection. I don't think that it exists. We, we're always tweaking flight models uh, on everything it seems like in the DCS world and, and elsewhere as well. It's just the nature of software. But I don't think that I would just hang it up and say, never mind, I'm not going to fly the Apache until they fix it. Because what does fix it mean? How do you know it's done? Again, we can have this debate of how many people have said, this is perfect, I love this, I love the way this feels, and then somebody turns around and says, this is terrible. So what does fix it look like? What does perfect look like? So if you're waiting for DCS or any other game to change things so that they're perfect for you, well then I would argue that you're probably in the wrong hobby because that's probably not going to happen. If, if it does, it's a happy coincidence, but it is certainly not by design. There's going to be people that are going to make changes based on reality because they are trying to make a simulation as close as possible within the construct and the confines of the hardware and the software available. But they are going to have a say and you may not like it. You may not feel that it is perfect. Okay. I don't feel like the thrust right now coming out of the tail rotor is perfect. But people who are smarter than me say that it's closer than I think it should be. Th that's fine. I'll deal with it. I'll live with it. The only difference is I've got a YouTube channel and I can complain about it. Okay? But that doesn't change anything. I'm not going to stop flying the Apache just because of it. I'm just going to change the way that I fly it. I'm going to say what's on my mind because, 
you know, that's kind of the point of having a YouTube channel, if nothing else. Uh, and I do want to share my thoughts with people because it may help those people come to some conclusions. But I certainly do not want to give anyone the impression that the Apache is broken and you shouldn't play it. You should get into it. Yes, things may change again. I got it. 100%. They may tweak something and then suddenly you pop back in and, uh, you know, you got to relearn a way to take off or re relearn a way to come to a hover or something like that. That's okay. It's not a, not a huge deal and uh, it can be frustrating. I agree. But I wouldn't let it take away from your overall enjoyment. So again, while I'm flying here, I'm still just kind of trimming the aircraft out. But I haven't had the aircraft do anything crazy on me. And again, I have a long stick extension. I've got instant trim set for both my pedals and my cyclic. I would not be able to come in as smoothly as this. I got a little wobble because everyone knows I can't talk and fly at the same time. But I would not be able to do what I just did in the old flight model. 100%. In fact, the last time I hit the trimmer, I guarantee my nose would have pitched up and I would have yawed heavily to the right. I just know it. My body was already bracing for it because that's what I was used to. So this is much better. Please do not misinterpret things that I say. Don't take everything I say as, you know, the 100% gospel. Or rather, I guess you should say, don't, don't paint with such a broad brush with things that I say. Go back to that video. I said, the flight model is great. The flying portion is great. I don't like the tail rotor thrust on the ground. And I think the ground friction is a little off. But if you really consider how much time I spend on the ground versus how much time I spend in the air when I'm flying the Apache, then uh, you can see that there's still plenty of enjoyment to be had. So, so don't let it scare you off. Jump back in the aircraft. Just, just pop that collective. Get in the air. Yeah, it may not look pretty, but after a while, you'll get it down. It'll be fine. And they may change the flight model again. In fact, they will. 100%. I already know it's not finished. And then we'll have to make some adjustments again. So if you've paid for the module, play with the module. And if you haven't paid for the module and you want it, don't be scared off. Go get it right now. It's a lot of fun. You can do cool stuff. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you.